Pepperdine hasn't made an effort to get it inside to somebody who might be able to draw that fifth foul? Well, I don't think they recognize that he is back in the game. And now that he is, I, I'm sure they're going to try to make that attempt to take the ball right to him, get him out of the game because he has been such a big factor on both ends of the court. Fife, Rose, Howard, Njai, and King. The fivesome for the Wolverines. Jalen Rose has not been a major factor in this game, especially on the offensive end. Struggled from the free throw line and from the field. 13 on the shot clock. King was fouled on the drive. Now the team fouls carry over. That's the sixth against Pepperdine, but they rule it a shooting foul, and King will have two. The foul on Brian Parker is his second. We talked early in the game about Jimmy King, who had been struggling with his outside shot. Early in the game, the team got him involved with a high lob to get his confidence. He made a couple of baskets, and now he's starting to assert himself again on the offensive end. Jimmy King's family doesn't want to watch. Hmm. Ten points for Jimmy. The junior from Plano, Texas, suburban Dallas. for the end of this game we'll try to get you out to the start of Providence in Alabama James Madison in Florida Pepperdine with its first possession of overtime Parker for three hit the deck as Fife contested the shot Tom Asbury wanted a foul might Pepperdine be prone to the attitude boy we had our chance to upset mighty Michigan at the end and we didn't do it and now we're in overtime not where we wanted to be it's very possible however being where in this position is a great position if you're Pepperdine. You come in as a huge underdog. You get a chance to play with a team that's been to the NCAA final the last three years, and now you got a chance to win this game. You have to continue with the same aggressiveness, aggressiveness that you started the game with. And here in overtime, Michigan back to the approach that got them the big lead. Pounding it inside, Rose drew the foul from Dana Jones, his third. Michigan by two, 354 left in overtime. Jason now, Jalen now three out of five from the line, two out of ten from the floor for eight points. Well below the season average. Pepperdine has done a good job of denying Jalen the ball. And once he gives it up, not allowing him to get it back, so he can, could be a factor on the offensive end. Michigan has scored the first four points of overtime. The other games that we mentioned moments ago just getting underway. James Madison with a two-point lead. And Alabama with a one-point lead over the Friars. In low, no, they missed the short one. Parker missed the follow. King tracks it down along the baseline. The Waves had a couple of shots at it. Came up empty from in close. It's deflected out of bounds by Brian Parker. The Waves did a good job of recognizing Jawan Howard guarding Nodo that time. Tried to take the ball to him and draw his fifth foul. Fife looks to the bench for instructions. His dad, Dan Fife, was the captain of Johnny Orr's Michigan team back in 70-71, was Dugan's high school coach at Clarkston High in Michigan. 15 on the shot clock. And Howard miscommunicated with Jalen Rose, who couldn't save it. And made a visit to our CBS courtside location. Might have hit his finger on the edge of our monitor here, trying to save that ball. The big break for Pepperdine. They still have not scored in overtime. We've played two minutes. Lopez for a long three off the rim. Big rebound for Jalen Rose. Well, he hasn't had a great night by his standards, but he has made some big plays when Michigan has needed him. He certainly has made a couple of tip aways, a couple of steals, and you see him getting great rebounds on both ends of the court, offense and defense. Jalen Rose with seven rebounds tonight. Midway through overtime. Pepperdine still has not scored. King for Howard. Missed the short one. Fife 
takes it out. They did not reset the shot clock. He realizes that. Sends it to Rose in the corner for three. That rattles out. Injai. And the shot clock did not reset immediately, so that's why the officials have blown the whistle. They've had a problem with the shot clock here at Kansas Coliseum throughout the day. John Hughes understands the situation. He's telling his officiating partners just that. The clock went down to zero and stayed at zero even after Michigan had started passing the ball around after the offensive rebound. Take a look at the shot. It's going to go up from the outside. Left-hand corner is a shot clock. Right-hand corner is a game clock. Does it reset? It hits the rim. At least a couple of seconds have gone off before it is reset. 33 seconds now on the shot clock. So Michigan can run more time. They're up by four with 2.10 left in overtime. Another big offensive rebound for the Wolverines. Dugan Fife, one of the smallest players on the court, other than Damon Lopez at 5'9", comes up with that offensive rebound. Three minutes deep into overtime. 17 on the shot clock. Jawan Howard working on Noether, one-on-one. -on -one. Michigan needs a shot, gets it from Rose, short. Rose, another rebound. And he was fouled 